70 years ago, the Korean War broke out. The North Korean army rolled across the 38th parallel and invaded the South. The American media have called it the Forgotten War, but in Australia, we were interested from the very start and have remembered it ever since. The war was sparked by tensions that have been growing between former allies after the end of the Second World War. The Korean Peninsula was caught between the Communist North and the Southern Republic, supported by the United States, and divided along the 38th parallel. The opening phase of the war was one of movement. The North Korean invasion drove the Army of the Republic and a handful of remaining US troops down to a tight perimeter around the southern port of Busan. The United Nations intervened, launching a daring landing at Incheon on the west coast and an advance up the peninsula from Busan. Australian forces were among the first to join the war. Fighter aircraft from number 77 squadron, RAAF, were flying escort for US bombers within a week of the North Korean invasion. And Australian sailors serving in the Royal Navy and in warships of the Royal Australian Navy became involved in inshore operations off the Korean Peninsula. By September of 1950, an infantry unit, the 3rd Battalion, the Royal Australian Regiment, 3 RAR, was in action, serving alongside South Korean and US troops. By late autumn 1950, UN forces had driven the North Koreans all the way to the Yalu River, within sight of the Chinese frontier. The Chinese entered the war. They attacked in overwhelming numbers through the winter blizzards. The UN was forced to retreat. In a desperate delaying action at the junction of the Kapyong River, 3 RAR held the road to Seoul in a bloody two-day fight. For their gallantry, the unit was awarded the US Presidential Distinguished Unit Citation, an honour the battalion still wears with pride today. In 1951, the war changed from one of movement to one of stalemate. US technology was deployed to counter Chinese manpower. Communist forces were forced back to the 38th parallel. During the advance, 3 RAR again distinguished itself by taking the forbidding feature Mariang San or Hill 317 across the Imjin River. In 1952, another Australian battalion deployed to Korea. Through 52 and 53, Australian diggers waged a war of deadly night patrols to dominate no man's land. On 27 July 1953, an armistice came into effect, once again dividing the Korean Peninsula along the 38th parallel. But no peace treaty has ever been signed making it the longest war in modern history. After the armistice, Australia continued to participate in the garrison south of the demilitarised zone. The bodies of Australian service personnel who died in the Korean War were gathered from scattered battlefield burials and reinterred in the United Nations Military Cemetery at Busan. Australian Defence Force personnel continue to serve as part of the United Nations Command Military Armistice Commission based in Seoul and over the past decades, veterans have made numerous pilgrimages to South Korea and the DMZ. One veteran, Ray Parry, a decorated survivor of the Battle of Kapyong and Mariang San, left Korea in 1951, a broken man. Returning in 2001, seeing the prosperous city that is modern Seoul, and welcomed by happy, healthy, friendly young Koreans, restored him and is one of the happiest moments of his life. From the devastation of war has sprung prosperity and a bond between our two peoples.